this is Toronado. We're going to show you what a, a green horse starts off like when we, we do some endo tapping with him. Uh, I did do a very brief session when he first dropped, dropped in because he really didn't have a head down cue at all. We're trying to put a halter and whatever and to be on the farm here at the training center he has to be able to relax. So we did a little bit and then I went, you know, this horse is so sensitive about things, he'd be a good example to show what starting a green horse with, with endo tapping. Uh, I'm going to simulate his reaction to endo tapping, the first touch of, with an endo tapping, I'm going to try to. I'm, I'm guessing uh, his reaction to sudden sounds is, is, is quite uh, pronounced, so uh, even though he looks rather calm now, what I'm going to try to do is, is show you with a, with a bag of tin cans and, and see what his reaction is like and see if, if I can simulate how he would react. When I first touched him with the whip, he, he almost thought of striking, he almost thought of uh, jumping back. That was a little bit what his reaction was, except his... His? thought oh, you're doing good. You're doing good. This was a guess to see that the way he moved his feet, except he was thinking of striking a little bit. He's not doing it right now, so I'm not going to scare him just for the sake of trying to simulate something. Um, he also, the previous owner had played a little bit, showing him a little bit of Spanish walk, but he, I, I'm trying to not go there whatsoever because I need him to be in control of his emotions before I ever ask him that type of thing. So, he's not right against the rail. What I try to do when I first end up tap a horse, I want, the, I want to stop all, for, all movement. Every time a horse starts to move, we start getting into a little bit of adrenaline surge. And what I want to do is I really want to limit that. I'd like to stimulate him. I want to stimulate his muscles so where we start to produce a little bit of endorphins in his body and then it's going to circulate into his stomach where he will absorb it. And he start to get more and more relaxed. Already he's bringing his head down anticipating just hanging out which is great uh, already he's putting himself in a relaxation phase most of the time when the horses are worried they'll have their head up like this and they're ready to run and anytime you touch them or ask anything of them they'll start to get excited now I'm gonna ask him to move just a little bit closer to the rail it's not necessary that he be right against the rail I will move him into that position I want him to get comfortable. See, as soon as he starts coming near near the rail, right away his head's up. You notice that the caboose is way behind there. That's not a picture of confidence. I'm not worried about getting his hind quarter right to the rail right off the bat. So when I first started tapping him, all I did was touch him like this and stop. His reaction was to move back and think of possibly striking at it and relax. So when I when I do this here with a with a wild horse. Like I'm also, when I touched him like this, he actually, you could see him setting up thinking he might strike at it. He doesn't know. He has no idea what I'm doing with the whip. So of my students like to rub with the whip. You can, you can go ahead and do that. It really doesn't matter. It's not a matter of, uh, of, of getting used to it. It's a matter of realizing that he accepts it, knowing that you're not going to hurt him. I do have a gentle touch on his halter, suggesting you bring his head down. I would like him to understand he can bring his head down, because the more he brings his head down, the more he will relax. The more time his head spans above the withers, the more he's prepared to go into adrenaline surge. So I don't mind him relaxing. You may hear the tap right now. It's not going to be that strong. But it will get a lot stronger when he understands that he's not going to die. And that I mean no harm. What I'm looking at originally is I, I, I like this area here. You, gotta be, you have to be a little bit more quiet if I tap here and I don't start there. I usually start on the large area here where there's a lot of soft tissue right there. And at first I might just stop a little bit regardless of the fact that he didn't bring his head down because what I'm looking at is I want him just to be calm. All right. 
I could also strike in this zone here. Some horses are more comfortable in this area here than this area because they're a little bit more sensitive anytime there's anything near the ears. I like to use this area here because it's very close to where the halter is and I can guide the horse to guessing the right thing. A lot of people think, well, I'm just training a head down cue. It's a lot more than that. Of course I'm going to train a head down cue because that's a terribly useful thing. Anytime I can cue a horse to relax and it's rather immediate, that's a real benefit anywhere in this horse's training when he gets a little bit excited. If I can cue that, right away he prepares himself to relax a bit more. A relaxed horse always learns better. I don't go all over the horse. I don't tap all over the place like this. I like to stay in the general area. He got his head up a little bit. I'm just going to suggest he brings his head down a little bit. And there you go. If you notice right there, he started to lick and salivate. He's not licking and salivating because he understands. He's licking and salivating because it's actually already starting to take an effect. And this guy here is a fairly sensitive horse. Uh, what I find with some of these sensitive horses is that they're very worried at the start. And then they start to get better reasonably quick. So the good thing with that is that if I use him as an example it's nice and you can see changes in him relatively quickly without taking all day some horses will require more time and they require what they require each horse is different with their sensitivity that's already quite good all right now all it is right now is he started to already understand the cue to bringing his head down as soon as he brings his head down, he already prepares himself to relax. All right. What I'm doing is I'm trying to control any movement so that he doesn't move uh, any more than he has to. Other than possibly, I might ask him to go a little bit closer to the rail with his hind end. And he does not need to be right to the rail. And then I'm going to ask him to relax. Now there's a couple things happening. I'm teaching him to relax, but I'm actually already initiating some very important yields. I'm going to need control of his hindquarters when I start to ride this horse, and even for play in hand. If he decides to move, I'll just bring him back to here. There, I just taught him another yield to, to yield with his leg to come forward. Now the first few minutes I tapped him the first time, he was definitely not this quiet. Again, because he's a sensitive horse, as soon as he starts to understand that this is not a bad thing, he starts to settle down quite well. But I wouldn't get too cocky when I'm training with a horse like this because sometimes they're pretty good, but as soon as there's something that, that, that stimulates them, uh, you'll find out that they can get their guard on fairly fast and get ready to go in the adrenaline surge. The whole idea is if I do endo tap them, we start to build the amount of endorphins in this horse's body. The more endorphins there are in, in his body, the more relaxed he's going to be. But the key component is that he will be much more difficult to stimulate with an adrenaline surge. So the whole idea is if I can get this horse so relaxed so that he can't get excited. All right, that sounds really good. I'm looking for somewhere, you know, reasonably good on that. I don't want his nose sniffing the ground because that's him getting distracted. I just want him to get calm in place. Now, if you notice his stance when I first started, he, he hit the caboose was way behind there. As he starts to get more relaxed, he'll actually start to stand underneath himself in a, in, a, in, in a much nicer frame. Once he gets the idea of having his head down, I don't need to keep having asking him to bring his head down because that actually feels good for him. He doesn't want to feel tense all the time. 
and if he's looking around, what I'm looking at is how does he look around? Does he look around nice and quietly or does he look around like, oh God, I'm going to die? And as soon as, if he starts to look around and he's rather calm, I don't mind him looking around a little bit. But what I would like him to do is to stay calm right in this position here. Again, he needs to yield his face. You notice the tapping is getting a little bit stronger. I need to stimulate more, but also I don't want him to take all day to go into a nice quiet position. You can experiment. Once the horse starts to, to relax and he starts to understand he can stand there, I don't, I don't necessarily hang on to the horse. He hangs on to himself. going to correct that. I don't want him moving. I'll bring him a little bit closer to the rail. I'm doing is I'm blocking with my whip. I don't want him looking this way. I want him to stay on this side. I don't want his head all over the place. busy with his face, he's thinking of where else could he be rather than just relaxing totally at this, this place right here and not worrying about anything else. I want him to not worry about anything else. Anything else is my responsibility, not his. on both sides of the horse. The reason I'm choosing this side, his mane's on the other side, and it's easier for you to see on the on the endo tapping as to where I'm tapping and how. I don't want his head out that way. I block it. trying to look away from the rail. See the little ear twitches? That's from the spanking noise of, 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 of the whip that tends to stimulate them. Horses are very sensitive to, the, to, 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 to sharp noises and this does have a bit of noise. That's why the whip is really quite cool in an aid to ask a horse different questions. Is that with the noise it makes it very hard for them to, to, to ignore the request. there he's lingering just a little bit too long with his head up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide him and ask him to just bring his head down just a little bit more. I stop because he starts bringing his head down below. I want I want to trigger that, but he should bring his head down. When I 
start the tap. A lot of people say, well, you're just cueing a head down. Yes, I am cueing a head down, but then once the horse has the idea of bringing his head down and relaxing, I want to make sure that I stimulate the horse to relax as much as possible. I'm going to ask the horse to step forward. I'm already controlling the feet with that. I can control the feet back by pushing. That's why I prefer a slightly stiffer whip, is that I, it allows me to push. I will also later on when the horse understands how to relax, I'm going to ask this horse to come forward. So I kind of push and drag. As I push on the horse's belly, then I drag it forward. Because when I'm riding, my, my leg will come from behind asking that horse to come forward. I'm not pulling it forward by its face, I'm actually asking it to come forward by its hind quarter forward. This is terribly useful later on when I start to ride. All these things, every time I ask any little yields, I can start to ask them right now at this stage. You can tap rather strongly, you should never welt the horse. this area as well as bring his head down and that's why there's a little bit of that resistance. For him to relax his pole, he has to he has to give to me and he's a little concerned about that because it, when he when he relaxes and he gives me control that way he feels that he's vulnerable. So I need him to understand that he can he can give give me that kind of relaxation and I'm gonna take care of him. I'm not gonna get him in trouble. sensitive horses are always on guard. It's really important that they learn to, to relax and not worry about that. If they start to trust me, then they're not going to worry that, that even though I ask them to do some rather strange things that are human-based, that he's not going to die. continue doing this and what I'm going to show you is that I do have one of my other endo tapping tools. Now this horse here uh, when it first started anytime you get excited he thought it was okay to run through you and a lot of people have a, have a lot of aversion to this tool. I think it's really important that people understand a tool is a tool and how you use it is what's important. The reason why this tool is such a cool tool is that because it makes noise, it gives you the boom factor. The, 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 the great thing about that is that if I need to get a horse's attention, I can get their attention without actually hurting them. And that's really important because if a horse thinks that it's okay to run through you, I'm sorry, you're going to end up getting hurt. A thousand pounds of horse getting excited, mowing you down does not feel good. But what's the, the nicest thing about this tool is that if I ask him to move off, it's really funny how that little bit of a noise gets his attention. Well, 
If I get his attention with a minimum of stimulation and a minimum of physicality, and that's the key, the minimum of physicality, is that now I'm not going to hurt him and he's going to get the idea and things are going to get better for both of us. So if I need him to move over, I'll ask him over. Again, I don't, I don't use the boom factor of, 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 the, of the plastic fat bat anymore than I have to, but the coolest thing about this is that this bat actually is a great endo tapper. And what I like about the fat bat is it actually works really well on fat horses. When I get a horse with a lot of adipose tissue, I find that the fat bat stimulates the muscle underneath there about as well as anything else. touch on the halter is minimal. Just to say he can feel it. It's just a guy. I'm trying to help him find the way to relaxation. And as soon as he starts to go there and gets lighter and lighter, he starts to understand he shouldn't hang on the halter. And he doesn't need to. And even though I'm hanging on to the nose band here, which a lot of horses object to because it gives you control of the, control the nose, you tend to control the feet a whole lot more. As soon as he starts to to relax and, and not fuss at all, I want to give him his freedom. I want him to realize that I, I'm not going to hog tie him. I'm actually going to allow him to just stand there and relax. So with that kind of freedom, he has a tendency to relax even more. So I'm going to bring him up forward. Maybe I want to go back. Maybe I want to go forward. Now, if I decide to go around this arena for the first time, what I'm going to be looking at is I'm going to want to have this horse totally relax every step. So as an example, if I was to ask him to go forward, he brings his head down and he relaxes and ask him again. Now I'm going to ask him forward. That's one step. So on that forward step, you notice his head comes up. You notice the moving back and forth because he's a little bit worried. Take care of the work. Relax him. stimulus from the outside. I don't worry about that. I just continue relaxing. His posture is more relaxed, which is good. Now I can ask him to come forward again. That was a little bit better. I didn't ask him to come by the rail. We're still on, correct? So I, I, I didn't ask him to go 
that close to the rail, he's offering that because I, we're moving down the rail, I, and I don't want him too close because I don't want him to bang it. On the other hand, I want him to be relaxed. I got him back to that spot. He thought, well, I'm not hanging on to him. He's going to move this way. And I'm like, no, you don't. I, I'm going to just keep correcting that. His, his responsibility is to stay to the rail where I am. Not over, not over there, not over there, and not sniffing the ground. He's sniffing the ground. He's already getting himself a little bit excited, and he's on vacation. And I don't want him on vacation because if anything happens, he won't be, he won't be paying attention to it the way he needs to. That's better there. I block. His spot is right over here. Good. So I need him to understand when I ask him to stand in a certain place, it's that place. Well, that's terribly useful when you're riding. When you're mounting a horse and you ask him to stand still, this horse here will understand standing still and being relaxed doing it. actually pretty quick. Now I'm going to ask him forward. I'm watching my line because I will pull it out. Good. I'm not terribly worried about my lead line because if he steps on it and I keep him relaxed, it really won't be a big deal. Forward. Pretty good. Pass him relax, bring his head down. Uh, you notice his front leg kind of bends, and just, that's his anticipation of, ass, of, of, of something else being asked. That's him, his motor running a little bit more than what he should. He won't be doing all that as he starts to relax more and more and starts to realize that he doesn't have to worry about anything else. Ask him forward. That's actually pretty good. The idea of my touching him there has already got him to bring his hind legs in, which is great. He's starting to understand his forward from the hind legs. And again, his relaxation cue. He brought his head down and he raise his head up quickly thinking well there could be something else over there he's a little distracted I don't want him to worry about everything else all I want him to do is to worry about what it is I have in mind for him and it's all good things back up. I'm going to elevate his head slowly and I'm going to ask him to back up slowly. I'm not looking for speed and I'm going to reorganize him by the rail. Now it's getting better. He's moving to the rail with less anxiety and I, I don't want him to be afraid to move his hind end over to the rail. But all horses are more comfortable with things at the front than they are at the back. They require a bit of time because of their, their vision. They can't really see the hind end. They can see at an angle like this. They can't see over there. So it's hard for them to tell exactly how close that hind end is to the, is to the rail. It's normal for horses to be concerned about that. So I'm going to ask for forward. Good. Ask for forward. I'm looking at is how quickly does the horse bring his head down? How comfortable does he get moving forward? When this horse gets real comfortable moving forward, his head won't be coming up in the air above his withers to come forward. He'll stay nice and relaxed because he'll be anticipating that I'm going to end or tap him down, which is great because what happens is now he learns to move forward without getting excited. 
horse gets excited, they tighten their back. When they tighten their back, they can't use their hip and back correctly. They're not as efficient in the use. They won't be as athletic, and it's also a lot more stress on them. A horse having his, raised, his head raised in an elevated manner correctly, that's not the same thing as having his head up and inverted. A lot of people tell me, well, they don't have the time to take that much time to go around an entire arena having their horse relax, yet I've seen people who go months on end, if not years, and their horse shies away from everything in every corner in the arena or any little thing on the outside. So I, I look at it, if it takes me anywhere from one to two hours to go around an, ten, an entire arena with a more, more complicated horse, to me that's time well spent, because then later on when I start to ride, especially a green horse, He's not darting away from every corner. He actually understands that the, the, the size of the rail are not, are not a problem. So it's worth the time. So now I'm gonna switch him side. So I'm gonna teach him the yield. His nose goes first, shoulder goes over, It's an easy. So I'm already practicing, I'm already practicing my, my, my forward on a bend, head, shoulder, good, head, shoulder, good, and a lot of people who have the version of the bat, this is probably the absolute best tool there is for actually teaching such a simple skill, head, shoulder, because if I get a horse that just blocks on that, it's amazing, a little tap with that bat, I'm not using much with him because I don't need to. Don't overuse a tool when you've already got the effect. So you see right here, he has a little bit less confidence on this side. Already he has had more handling over on his, on, on his left side, so now his right side, he doesn't have the same amount of confidence. And again, I just start over. He's telling me he's not that confident there. I don't worry about that. All I need to do is to relax him and then he'll get over that. So already he's transferring. He's already getting accustomed to the idea that, oh yeah, you tap, head down, cue. And he's actually putting himself in a position to relax. And that's a good start. But notice how quick he is to come out of that. So it's not necessary for me to, to start moving him forward in this direction until he's very comfortable being closer to the rail. So I'm going to ask for his four quarters over a little bit and relax him again. How well this horse transfers from one, one half of his brain to the other. Uh, it is what it is, so he tells me what it is. So some horses have more difficulty with that. This guy here is actually pretty quick, which is often happens with horses with Andalusian blood. Iberian horses tend to be pretty quick to transfer. This is a three-quarter Andalusian. And that's getting better. Again, watch the hind quarter. You see how it kind of drags behind? That's, he's telling you, he's still a little worried. That's why the caboose is so far behind. As a horse gets in a better emotional state, they'll start to move more together. It won't be so scratched out. 
they, they just tend to collect their body there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to the other, I'm going to switch back to my other endo tapping whip because it's more comfortable to handle than this. Already he's calmed down a fair bit starting to get the idea that he doesn't have to worry so much which is what I want because if he's worried I'm not I you know when he, this horse comes into a situation a training situation he's all worried we need to take care of that if we don't get him in a decent emotional state anything we try to teach him after that will only complicate things even if I use shape changing exercises which will will improve his emotional state it's not the same as if I take all motion out and then I create a real positive shape. Anytime we combine touches to the face with Ben, and this is the other part you may not see so well from, from the videotape is that right now his head is, he's got a slight tilt towards me and I want that because that's a slight bend. Anytime there's there's bend in this horse and I stimulate his rib cage like that, it just accelerates the relaxation process. I've had a lot of people will go, well, you know, where would you tap? I love tapping out over here because when I'm riding this horse, this horse starts to understand that when I tap him over here that actually he can he can start to relax well later on when you're riding this could be terribly beneficial because when I touch him with my legs or if I was to do a little bit of bumping there he'll start to stretch his top line and relax puts him in a good place for me to ride puts him in a good place for me to teach him things also one of the things I like to do is if I, I, I call it you know there are you can tap a horse and relax them, or you can tap them right out. When I tap a horse right out, what I'm looking at is I want him to just totally succumb to the total relaxation. And he's starting to get there. Uh, if you look, he's, he's much more comfortable just standing there without thinking of, I need, to, I need to move, I need to get out of here, I'm a little worried. Uh, he's still a little bit worried. The eyes are getting more quiet. If you look at his eyes, his eyes are all of a sudden looking at things like, oh, that's not so bad. Before, his eyes were darting all over the place, feeling that he had to be worried, that he had to maybe be careful because something was going to come out and hit him. As soon as I increase the, 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 the intensity of the tap in this area, right away he starts to bring his head down. That's great. I want him to do that. Because as soon as he starts to do that, the endorphins will start to kick in even stronger. But anytime he brings his head down that far and he loosens his pole, you can actually cause the horse to even go as far as salivating and drooling. And that's a natural response, a relaxation response in, in their body. Now, if you notice, his, his lips are starting to get a little bit longer, they're getting a little bit softer, his eyes are getting softer. Those are all little indications that it's starting to take effect. And if you look at his general shape, all the muscles are starting to relax. The horse will start to look less bony, and he is a, a fairly immature five-year-old. Uh, there's a lot more horse here to come. What I'm looking at is, is his general shape nice and soft? You know, does, does, does he feel like he can totally relax? Does he feel that he's going to be safe? I, I need him to think he's going to be safe. Because this is going to be my regrouping area. You know, later on, if I decide I want to tackle something like trailer loading, this is terribly cri critical. Uh, uh, endo tapping has totally, has totally changed 
uh, the the uh, sequence in in trailer loading because instead of you know in in, in, in some of the older style uh, natural horsemanship we used to you know go out to the trailer drive a horse to try and then we would go away to reward them well the funny thing is is that if I can relax him where he is I don't need to go away so I don't need to go away from the trailer and the key is once I get him in the trailer I can actually relax him in the trailer well that's a heck of a tool before the only way you could get that horse to really start relaxing in many cases was to take him out of the trailer well that's where it gets really cool is when you can actually turn that trailer into a safe place so we're going to stop the camera for just a second and I'm going to just jump ahead with some bomb proofing so that just to show you how you can take something that will probably scare a horse and turn it into a total positive. So now I, I'm introducing a tarp, but I'm also using the endo tapping. I'm going to get two first stuff. What I want is this horse to be braver. The tarp again is a little bit like the bag of tin cans, a plastic pool, uh, even my fat bat because it has it, it has noise and it carries energy very easily. So. Uh, the first part of it, uh, at, we just had a clinic this weekend and I had him in one of the paddocks right beside the arena so he's gotten to watch other horses. Uh, also the training sessions yesterday he watched my other more experienced horses dragging the tarp around and having my dog all over it and whatever else. So he's already got to see it knowing that It, it can't be all that bad. He has been concerned about it. But what I'm looking at is he has to understand that I'm not worried about it. So if I'm not worried about it, if I'm not worried about it, he may not have to worry about it. And too often what we do is we expect the horses to be brave about things. And what we do is we forget to show them that they don't have anything to worry about that. And leading by example is a big deal. We don't do enough of that. Now, so he's had a little bit of that watching, you know, my dog playing in the pool as I drag it around, the tarp, being all over it and dragging the dogs around. So he's already got a little bit of an idea that it doesn't necessarily need to be a bad thing. Now when I start to introduce it to the horse, I'm kind of looking at it just like that exercise of going down the rail. I'm looking at it as I need that horse to move one step at a time and to be totally relaxed. So what I, what I do is I make sure, first thing, I'm not interested in the horse playing with the tarp at all. I don't want it to do that. He's not going to do that. how he lifted the leg that's really useful because later on when I get on a tarp if I decide I want to retreat I can do that because I can get him to lift his leg so he doesn't drag the tarp and scare the limb of the Jesus out of himself. I ask him forward and again I need him to relax. is already noticing that I'm only making a short little step every time. That's really important. The horse has to understand that I'm not going to ask him to just totally overcome this tarp on one shot. I want him, if he watches me correctly, he's going to notice I'm taking short little steps. I don't want him to rush. It's not about running over the tarp. It's about being on the tarp and being safe. 
his left four now, he considered offering it stepping forward. I'm not worried about it if he doesn't. But if you notice, he took that step forward and he actually didn't bring his head up. Now again, he's feeling more comfortable with his front end coming forward, but the caboose is still pretty far behind. I've seen horses that the front end keep stepping forward and the hind end is so far behind that when it slingshots forward, they scare themselves. And this is where I can help him by doing this. I'm actually going to cause him to come forward and contract his, his stomach muscles so that he can actually bring his, his, his legs forward. And right there, you should have noticed he was actually licking. So I'm going to ask for a little bit of forward. I want to see, I want to see how much he watches me. See, that's pretty good. He noticed that I took a little baby step forward and he just decided that, yeah, I think you're going to ask me to come forward. Being the smart horse that he is, he just took a sigh right now and went, okay, I'm all right. I see the way he's going. The steps have to be so small that the horse can't mess it up. Had he tried to paw the tarp again, I would have probably moved him back. I don't want him hooking the tarp and scaring himself. But also, on the other hand, if I start endo tapping fairly quick, he'll actually start to come down and relax himself without getting busy. A busy horse on a tarp is a horse that's ready to scare himself. Later on, when he's totally confident, that's a different thing. Again, very small steps. That was pretty good. I always set up the horse with steps so small they can't mess it up. There you go. He finally relaxed his neck there. Ask for a little bit of forward. That was actually pretty good. Now he's stepping forward. He's stepping forward with the shoulders coming away from the rail a little bit. So as soon as I relax him here right now, I'm gonna ask him for I'm gonna ask him for a step over closer to the rail. I don't want him thinking that he should crowd me. At the same time, I don't want him to pass. I push his nose away. I'm gonna ask him for a nice easy step away. He chose to step in front, not a big deal. Had he stepped behind, that would have been totally fine with me. I just want him to understand I don't want him on top of me. Got a wasp there. And this is about as exciting as bomb proofing should be. back there I don't worry about that you know, when he steps forward and then he feels that he's a little concerned and he steps back I, I, I'll just slowly resist him but I don't try to hold him now once he stepped back and he realizes he doesn't die and as soon as I relax him I will ask him to come back forward So he's not just learning to go over the tarp, he's actually learned to do something that's a little bit scarier and improve his yields at the same time. Now he's just kind of stepped back there a little bit. That's just his confidence. There you go. I don't worry about it. He's the one that tells me when he's worried. If he's worried, i got to work with whatever he gives me.
him to just relax enough. That's, I don't worry about that because what's going to happen is all that stimulation, when he finally does bring his head down, he's going to come down and, and relax considerably. licking there. He did do a couple of tests in my hand, kind of raising his head. I just slowly resisted that. I, I did allow him to bring his head up. I don't want him to think he's forced there. I'm going to strongly suggest he stays with me, but I'm not going to force him in this position. I'm not terribly worried if my dog's over there and causing a bit of stimulation. If I don't rush this horse, he's not going to panic if my dog starts to play with the tarp. If I'm going too fast, he will panic if all of a sudden that dog starts to tug on the tarp or whatever else. He will, he will start to panic. But if I make sure that he's totally okay every step, that's not going to happen. a lot of time at clinics people say well you know my horse is pretty good till you started beating the tar out of the tarp or if you start moving around what happens is we're, we're outdoors and anytime you get a bit of a breeze or whatever that may that may well uh, get underneath the tarp and move it around and give it a life of its own well you have to make sure that that horse is prepared for for that type of thing so that it doesn't realize it's going to die or do something you know so stupid and hurt itself by acting nice and easy now it's not important that i go all the way over the tarp what's important is that every step is a relaxed one and I'm just about done with this portion of it, but what I'm looking at is, oh, that was actually a real strong step with his hind end. I actually thought he was going to let it linger behind. He actually offered a big step with his hind end, almost stepping on the tarp. Um, again, I don't worry about that. I don't try to cause it. I, I do worry if the, the, the hind end is too far behind. I, I may ask him to take a step with his hind quarter, but it's not important that he does so. When he, when he brings his entire body over on the tarp, that's because he's not worried about being on it. What will happen often, the horse will leave the front end on, will leave the, front end on, on the tarp and the hind end will be way behind because now it feels that it can run away if it has to. When a horse offers to put his whole body onto the tarp, and be relaxed, that's a good sign that they're feeling that they're not in jeopardy. Now, did you see that hind leg, how it kind of, a little bit of wiggle wobbles on it? He's trying hard, keeping his emotions under control. But there was, right there was, you know, he was still a little concerned. practice with tarps with horses and keeping them relaxed one of the things we used to always do is go forward 
the cool thing about if you use your endotap equipment and I, I, I push on the knees, I can actually get him to lift his feet on the back up so that he doesn't drag it. So when he lifts that, I actually not worried about dragging the tarp, which is really good because I can go any which direction. That was really good. So if I can control the feet with emotions in a very positive state, you're not in a, in a, in a position where you're gonna you're, you're gonna have to uh, watch out for a horse exploding. But the big thing is, is don't take these things for granted. Make sure that every time your horse comes to a very good place. So now what we're doing is, we're, you know, we're getting two fur. It's actually three fur. We're getting all these yields forward and backward. We're getting strong relaxation cues. Uh, we're doing the bomb proofing. Plus, we're gaining the horse's trust, realizing that we can do something that's pretty challenging for their emotions. And it doesn't have to be in a negative way whatsoever. So I'm giving this horse a reason to follow my lead and realize that I will only go as quickly as he's prepared. That'll pretty much be it for this for this first little videotaping session. We can use the endo tapping to, to create proper bend on the circle. We can use endo tapping for improving the gates. Uh, there, there's all kinds of different uses for it. Uh, you know, I may want to endo tap the horse like this before I have my farrier trim his feet because it's really nice. Uh, if my horse is nice and relaxed when I come out and I ask him to, to, to do something with his feet and he's not worried and thinking he's going to die. Maybe before a vet visit. You know, I've done this endotapping before horses are ultrasounded and, and things like that. And it's, it's a lot cheaper than sedating a horse so that the vet can, can ultrasound it. So uh, those are all things that, you know, if you notice your horse might be a little bit colicky depending on what the type of colic is. I've had horses that have gotten a little bit colicky and I've been able to totally get them back into a healthy place with endo tapping. Now, again, it depends on the type of, uh, it depends on the, on the type of colic. If it's, there's torsion involved, uh, all the endo tapping in the world may not help you there. Got a few wasps here. Okay, we're going to end it there. <laughs>